Good morning. Welcome to Office Hours. I'm your host, Marie Poulin, and today we are going to do some live building. Uh, let me know in the chat if you've come to a past Office Hours before or if this is your first one. Um, often we bring in guests who are willing to show us behind the scenes of how they use Notion. Um, and I know sometimes we tend to show some pretty advanced use cases and we don't want to leave some of our more beginner uh, Notion users in the dust. And so we thought it might be fun to kind of um, offer to pull you up on screen or even just to answer your question by building live so you can kind of see how it works. Exciting. Mark says it's his first one. Awesome. Let us know where you're coming in from. Hey, April, Georgina, Elaine, Bob. Awesome to see some familiar names popping up here. Uh, Mitch, I saw that you asked a question too. Um, I'd love to answer that and uh, would love to check if you're interested and open to coming up on screen. Amazing. Um, some great questions popped up around uh, Tiago Forte's para method too. So I thought it might be helpful to share some of the ways I think about Notion and organize it. Um, of course, Notion is like Lego blocks. You really can organize it in any way that makes sense for you. I have my own opinions about what works. Um, someone else also asked about recipes and I just wanted to share. Um, I do have a template for that. I'm not sure if you've seen it, um, but if there is anything that you see that you are you want the template, I'm happy to share that. So um, I'm gonna focus in on this here. Um, so I've got this food and meal prep database. Um, who is that that asked about that? Was that? Oh, that was Mark. Okay, so uh, Mark, I don't know if you had a chance to see my um, food prep and meal planning, but I'm gonna copy this link for you so you can access it. So it's totally public um, and I can just kind of give you a quick run through of how it works and um, and again, if there's anything that you see that you want me to elaborate on, I'm happy to do that. Otherwise, we'll open up the floor. And uh, if you want to hop on and screen share something, maybe you're stuck with something or you just kind of want to know um, how you might best approach it, I'm totally happy to answer that. Uh, Justin said, brand new user, upgraded, but feeling a tad overwhelmed. I'd love some help setting up my Notion space as a second brain. Yes. So relational databases, pages versus databases, I think this is it's the most powerful and most confusing part of Notion. And once you wrap your brain around it, the possibilities are endless. And so I'll definitely go into a little bit of that differentiator because I think that's one of the most important things to learn is the difference between pages and databases and how to really supercharge them. Um, great. Relate ingredients to meals, generate a shopping list. Yep, you can definitely. Uh, you could definitely do that. Um, and did someone say second brain? Yes, there's a lot of us that that have strong opinions about setting up our space um, using the second brain method. So just to give you a quick overview of the way that I structure my space, I have a master tasks database, which includes all of the tasks across all of my different workspaces, personal, uh, business, all of it. I have a calendar that mostly serves as a content calendar. So this is like my editorial calendar um, projects here. And again, I have this in a number of different views. So I can view this on a calendar if I want to. I can view this, uh, you know, I can see Ben's projects, just my projects, just my client projects. And I find, I find it kind of helpful just to look at it by uh, type of project. I've got my areas here, which if any of you have seen my uh, past events, you might notice this actually looks a little bit different. I've moved my areas into databases instead of pages. And um, the beautiful thing about Notion is you can change your mind. If I decide that I don't want this to be a database entry anymore, I want that to be a page, I can literally drag that around. Um, and what's nice about areas is, for example, I have an areas called Notion. I run these Notion office hours. I have a course on Notion. Um, I do a lot of different types of projects within Notion. So Notion is an area of my business. And what I can do is relate this to all of the active projects I've got on the go. Anything, um, any tasks that are related to Notion calendar events, you can see all of our office hours on there, um, notes related to that. And so, uh, similarly, I can have inline templates here. So if I want to create a new proposal uh, to work with the team, I can click that, that generates a new proposal, and then I can move that into a project space. I can also embed my project database inside of this entry. So I know it gets a little bit crazy and I'm happy to elaborate on any of this, but this is basically a database entry 
that then has a database embedded inside of it. Um, you can copy and paste instances of your database anywhere throughout your workspaces and as many times as you want. So this is filtered to only show projects that contain Notion. And someone had a question about how to do sub projects. So this is one way that you might want to consider doing that is um, you'd have your main project entry and inside of that you would have a filtered view of your sub projects. <laughs> awesome. April's willing to jump on and share. Um, Chris says, Marie, you've got several databases in use for task management, tasks, outcomes, objects, but there are several databases included. Could you reference those? Tasks, okay, so I can go into a little bit more detail um, about my like uh, objectives and that sort of thing, but basically tasks are all of my day-to-day -day tasks, outcomes and objectives are, are more like my bigger sort of like quarterly goals. I'll go into a bit more detail about that and show you what that looks like. Um, but yeah, embedded embedded databases are are pretty life changing. It's a nice way to kind of group information together. So again, my my projects are here, but I can also access those projects in the projects area, um, and I can also access it in my dashboard. So the idea is that you can make your information available in many different places. Um, I think the task database is a great way to do this, so that um, there's not one place where all of my tasks live. So as an example, if I go to my dashboard, I can see my tasks here, but I can also see my tasks in my weekly agenda. Uh, I can see them here, or I can see them embedded here. Um, so it's sort of a way to, uh, you know, prevent from anything slipping through the cracks. It's almost like there's no excuse for me to not see those tasks. If I create a new entry in my journal, Similarly, I have what needs to get done today, right? So those tasks are always, always visible in multiple places. I'm just gonna take a peek at the questions here. So let's see. So Mitch was asking about the best way to create a project report that groups sub projects and tasks according to their parent project and sub project. Uh, Mitch, are you at all interested in coming up and, and workshopping it and, and looking at maybe how it looks in your space and to see how we might approach it? Or do you want me to kind of um, show you how I might approach it in my space? Let me know in the chat. Happy to bring you up on screen, but uh, essentially, I've got, um, like if I were to create a new project here, a few things I could do. So I often create a, a client portal and you can see my master task database are here, um, but maybe you might want to re-embed the project, uh, re-embed the project database or create a new database here for your sub projects that you don't want to necessarily appear in your master projects here. So there's a couple different ways you could do the project sub project thing. Um, I would probably do everything as a project and then tag it, um, tag it with a related project and then embed it below in the, um, in the entry. Mitch, I can share. I don't have a mic or a camera. Um, as long as you're fine to screen share, Mitch, I can, I can pull you up if you're, Open to it. Let's give that a shot. I know sometimes it's hard to talk about hypotheticals and it's it's nice to actually dive into the nitty gritty. Let me know if that works, Mitch. I just sent you an invite. Oh, you don't have a mic. I just saw that. Um, Toran says, I'm still getting my head around relational databases, especially tagging one project to another. Okay, so I, you probably see that um, a lot of my entries rely heavily on relations. So for example, um, I've got tasks in here that relate to this project. Um, maybe I can do, Sometimes I like to just start start new things in the playground. OK. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is just create a really simple table just to illustrate how the relational databases work. Um, this is a thing. And you'll notice um, every entry that you put into a table, you can open up and it sort of has um, database properties, but then also has page properties. So you can treat this like a page. You can put databases in here, inline databases. I could put like another table in here. Um, I could even add another entry and put a table inside. So you can kind of do some, some crazy database inception if you want to. But let's keep this simple for now. Uh, let's add a relational property here. So what you can do is add a new property and select relation. And this allows you to choose any other database that you have in your space. So let's say I want to uh, relate this to my tasks database. Um, you can just start searching and it'll ask you to pull in your tasks. Um, maybe I'll just put in one of my uh, playground ones just for fun. And just make sure to name that. new task. So I can either add a new task or I can search for one that already exists and pull that in and just click the plus sign to add those tasks. Um, now those become related. And if I click on this here, this would be the name of your task. If I click on that, I can actually go into this entry and I can see that that is now related to um, this thing here, this thing here. So I can kind of jump back and forth in one click. <laughs> um, Torin, does, does that make sense in terms of how to start connecting and relating those pieces? For me, the most important ones are that my uh, areas are connected to a project and a project is connected to a task. I think those at a minimum are sort of your most important um, core functionality. Everything else is just bonus. Like I love linking things up to my weekly agenda, my journal. Um, and I think that makes sense when you've gotten to know Notion a little bit better and a little bit more advanced so you can really connect those pieces. Uh, but at a minimum, I just really love being able to connect the projects to the tasks. So if I open up a project, I can see every single task that is tagged or associated with that thing. Um, the other nice thing about that is, let's say you want to add a new, let's say we want to add a new task in here. I'm going to add that here. Um, and you'll notice there's no emoji, there's nothing there, there's no other properties with this task. But if I click on this task, um, I can go in, add a date, you know, let's say I want to do that tomorrow in progress. Um, what I often like to do is create templates for these tasks because you probably have templates that you do um, or tasks that you do over and over again. So if I have um, like Girl Guides, right? That's the organization that I volunteer for. If I have a Girl Guide related task, um, I will update the icon there to be related to that. Or like, let's say you have, you know, golf related activities. You can um, adjust that there and already, you know, put some tags in there in advance. And that way, anytime you add a new task that is uh, golf, I can click on that that's going to immediately give it those properties. So that's one nice way to just kind of quickly um, jump back and forth between. Um, um, and add properties between those different relations. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it does take uh, quite a bit of time to wrap your head around. Mark asked, how long do you spend on your Notion setup per day? I barely have the time to do the tasks on mine. So this is a great question, Mark. I will say my space is now set up to be maintained in seconds because the structure is already there. So to add a new project, I already have project templates there. To add a new task, I already have all of my tasks in there. It takes it takes no time in terms of building the setup. The real time is in building your setup the way that you want it to function. Um, and so, yeah, that's that has definitely taken a bit of time. But I was really, really motivated because I have a lot of client projects on the go and I, I wanted to make sure that my tasks aren't slipping through the cracks. Um, so again, once as you use Notion, you start to understand your needs better and you say, oh, actually, I think it would be more helpful. I find myself continuing to create these like web design proposals over and over again. Um, how can I templatize that? And I, I do think Notion's templating system is one of the most underutilized parts. When I look at people's setups and I realize like they're not actually using database templates and they're not using inline templates, which can really, really speed up your workflow. So 
um, yeah, I don't actually spend a lot of, of time in terms of making things and, and setting things up in Notion. Um, I've gone through in the past, like what my weekly process looks like and what my uh, journaling process looks like. But that process would be the same whether I was using a paper planner or um, Asana or something like that. And uh, all my templates are kind of ready to go. Question popped in. Okay, dive into pages versus databases a bit more. Okay. I'm trying to understand why one wouldn't create everything as a page with an embedded database on it. Oh, brilliant question, Dan. Okay. So I think I think a really great example of this is a journal, for example. So if I created a, a page for a journal instead of a um, database, the database is what allows you to have all of these different properties, as many as you want, as many different types as you want. So what that allows me to do is see my information in different ways. So if I click on this, like now I have all of these properties and I can I can view this as a gallery, I can view this as a reading list. Um, and at a glance, I can see, you know, what am I reading over time? I can quickly access that. Um, if these were buried inside of a page, it would be a lot harder for me to see those connections. And some of this is gonna be personal preference, but um, with things like client meetings, I'd want those to be in a database because I wanna know who attended, what the date was, um, maybe any tasks that came out of that that I could relate to my database. So that allows me to connect properties and be able to relate them very, very quickly. I think when you're just starting, a page can, can make a lot of sense. Um, for example, areas here is a page that has an areas database inside of it. And then what that allows me to do is filter that information. So you can't really filter pages, you can filter database entries. Um, and so I have this filtered by anything that's category personal is going to pop up here. Anything that's category business is going to going to show up here. Um, and the this, for example, um, like my case studies is a database that I can share with clients. I can embed this database onto other pages. Um, I often will refer to databases inside of multiple other pages. Um, with a page, you can link to a page in many different pages, but um, the database functionality is so, so powerful for relating information. So um, in your specific example, you were saying like, why wouldn't I just make a page and put a database inside of it? Um, the database inside would be the only thing that you can uh, create connections between. How do you copy databases and put them in other areas of the workspace? Okay, so um, I'm gonna see if I can I can explain this. Okay, so let's say I wanna add a new area. Um, let's just call it fancy pants. Um, this is a new area of my business. Let's say it's gonna start today and go till end of the month. And let's say as part of that fancy pants project, um, I want to make a new project that's like design new pair of fancy pants. Okay. I'm just going to leave that there. Okay. So that is a database entry, right? But let's say I changed my mind and I'm like, ah, like that feels like overkill. Like maybe I don't need all that data. I can actually drag that right out and that becomes a page. So if I open up page, that's going to be blank. All those properties are gone. But if I change my mind again, I can actually say, oh, wait, actually, I want to I want to go back and reassign that data. I can drag that right back into the database and you'll see that that da data populates again. So that data is actually retained, which is which is really, really great. Um, so, again, you can you can move stuff around. I can actually re embed the same database. Um, oh, why are you asking me to log in? <sighs> Sorry, guys. That's pretty random. Okay, so um, where were we? Okay, so you're asking how do, how do you uh, input a database inside of a page? So I could actually input it inside of this page or I can make Fancy Pants its own page. And two different ways you can do this. One is to copy the link to the database. There's three, three dots on the right hand side. Um, so I can say copy link, go into my Fancy Pants, hit enter. And I can just hit uh, Command V to paste that and just click Create Linked Database. And then by default, it shows it in a table and then I can add a view to it. So let's say I want to make that a gallery. 
You can create as many different views of your areas as you want. I can change up the properties. So maybe I just want to show the page cover. Uh, maybe I want to show any tasks that are associated with those areas, any tags, projects, notes. Let's just show everything just for fun, just to show you what that looks like. Um, I could also change the size of the entries. I can make them small if I want to. And I can also, maybe I don't want to scroll all the way down to the bottom. It feels like uh, it's a little too contained. I'm going to go full width on this page. So this becomes a database embedded inside of a page. Um, and what's nice about this is then I can also, you know, I can uh, make headings like this. I can add uh, copy. I can make columns. So I can do, um, I can sort of mess around with the structure of the page while still having an embedded database below. And this is again, a database that lives elsewhere, um, but I can reference it anywhere that I want and I can filter it. So like, let's say this is um, like a business dashboard or you know, business projects or clients, or you, know, you wanna make a different dashboard for each client. I can filter this and say, just show me projects that are tagged with this one thing or another thing. So show me everything that's that's tagged with whatever, writing. There's nothing tagged with writing, so that's not going to show up. But it just it shows you that it gives you the options to really um, manipulate um, and show only what you want to see at any one given time. So I'm just going to check in on the questions there to see, does that make sense in terms of how to embed databases inside of pages? Started to have pages for subject index pages and databases for, yeah, I find having databases, especially for, for projects, for tasks, for anything that, anything that you're tracking similar data over time. So for every project, I know there's always a start and end date. I know there's always a client associated with that project. Um, there's going to be a certain area that it's tagged with. So anytime that you have similar items needing the same information being tracked, I think that's a good use case for a database instead of a page. Oh yeah, good question, Lauren. Um, is there a way to export a database but only showing the filtered view when I export it has all the data, which I guess I could edit in Excel, but in PDF I'm stuck. I, I do... I do believe that that is a limitation when you export the database. It, it does show all of the entries. Um, I mean, you could do like a full page screen capture maybe. Um, I wonder what that would look like. I'm gonna do a full page screen capture and see if that would... Like it's, it's not necessarily perfect or ideal, but you could do it as a full page screen capture um, and then save that as a PDF or something like that, or an image if you wanted to, to do that, that might be helpful. Okay, so Dan was saying, seems like a page can have multiple databases, but a page that's, oh, yes, okay, this is a great distinction. Um, if you choose to have a database, uh, like a page as a database, I'm gonna say like new page, uh, command option nine makes that, uh, turns it into a new page. So if I hit enter, it's gonna create a page unless I choose one of these database properties. If I choose a database property here, this page can only be a database. So the thing about pages is pages can have as much content as you want and as many inline or embedded databases as you want. But a database page is really just one database type. You can choose any number of, of types here, but it can only ever be one database. So that's an important distinction to know. Um, my gosh, it took me a long time to wrap my head around that. Seems like um, having multiple databases, not understanding why it wouldn't be better to just have everything be a page so you can stick databases wherever you want. Um, I mean, you you can do things as pages, absolutely. Um, but again, like if I had every project as a page, I wouldn't be able to relate projects. I wouldn't be able to um, connect them. So like Notion Office Hours, I have related projects to that. Um, and I, I like being able to see those connections, right? I like being able to see, to save a resource and then apply that resource to multiple places in my workspace. Um, so, you know, I can, I can do a search here, like how do you manage weekly planning, how to build a second brain in Notion, Notion resources. Um, 
I have so many resources in that I want to be able to pull into projects. Um, I, I feel like that would be you can like you absolutely could do that, right? You can you can make pages and refer to those databases, but at the top level, I really like being able to have those properties uh, to be able to connect relationally. Personal preference. So again, there's so many different ways you can do this, and if you look at many different people set up, you will notice that they all look wildly different. Okay, I'm going to check in on the questions that popped up. Okay, so uh, Mitch was asking about that, the projects and sub projects. I think, I think we addressed that in terms of, um, you know, I've got the bedroom office project, and I've got like embedded data, I've multiple databases inside of this entry here. Um, so I could, I could even create like a, a table here, and that might be all of my sub projects here that might be one way to do it again or the other way would be to re-embed the same projects database but filter it to only projects that are tagged with this project so that's two different ways you could do um, projects and sub projects lauren asks can you copy blocks and paste them into database templates in another pages linked database Let's see if i can wrap my head around this and Lauren, let me know if you're interested in coming up on screen too. If there's something that specific that you're that you're trying to do, um, we could definitely workshop that. Um, I'll invite you up on screen. You can let me know if you're if you're comfortable to do that. Copy blocks and paste them into database templates. Yes, I mean you can and you can move data anywhere. So if you have a page that you like and you want to move that into a template, you can do that as well. I'm happy to show you what that looks like. Looks like it didn't, the invite didn't work, Lauren. Oh, yeah, it worked. Okay, no worries. Um, did you want me to try to elaborate on um, how to move something into a template, a database template? Uh, Dan was saying, okay, I totally understand the value of relational database. I'm just asking why your projects in your example wouldn't be a page with an embedded database. Uh, you could still link everything. Um, I could, but then um, I, so I like to be able to sort my projects in a few different ways, which uh, is a little tricky. Like if, if they're just pages, I'd have to kind of come up with one layout, but the ability to be able to uh, tag and view things by type is is very helpful for me personally. Um, again, I can say just filter to show me everything that's, um, you know, perspective or active or um, just show me every project that is tagged with Notion or is tagged with client. Um, you know, I like I just like to be able to do that. Um, you could absolutely keep it keep this as like a list of pages with columns or whatever, absolutely totally could do that. For me, I like being able to have these different views. Even if I wanted to see like what's Ben up to, I can I can click on his and um, see all the projects that he's assigned to. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that helps clarify. Yeah. Rod was saying, yeah, you you would you'd kind of end up with a huge list of pages, which is fine. You know, some people are are happy to do that, but um, I just I really like being able to manipulate the data. Um, so really, just being able to have some pre-filtered views already kind of ready to go is is really really helpful. Okay, and Steve said many areas um, set up as pages with an embedded database and that yeah so similarly as steve was just mentioning like areas is a page but i actually have an areas um, database here and that is just basically re-embedded above with a different filter so um, and for the longest time really until last month this this was a series of pages so marketing and sales was a page clients and customers was a page, operations was a page. But now that I've moved them into an entry, I can I can associate items on my calendar with this area. And I can, um, again, just show me all the areas that have active projects, right? There's, there's so many options that the database view gives you that you wouldn't be able to do with pages. Um, but that that's also like level nerdy, right? Like you don't have to, to <laughs> take it that far. Um, Yes, April, like April's got an awesome setup too, and she works with clients. So um, let's pull April up and she can do a little bit of a of a demo too. We can. OK, 
Okay, so we, we did cover how to copy databases. Okay. Mm, any advantage in working with the browser over the desktop app? Um, the advantage for me is using the clipper. I often will use the full page web clipper and I'm always, you know, clipping things that I'm reading into my space. So that that would really be the major advantage for me. I do still kind of use both the uh, I use both the desktop and um, browser simultaneously. Can you review how to share a page with clients but limit what they see, specifically with respect to task lists? How can we limit a client view to only see tasks related to them but hide internal tasks from my team? Okay, this is such a good question, Karen. Um, and we are we are definitely going to go into way more detail about task management and, and project management specifically because this is definitely one of the more complex use cases for Notion because I have my master tasks database, um, but none of my clients can see those tasks. So I actually, um, I actually create, uh, there's, <laughs> there's a few different ways to do this because some of my clients have their own Notion spaces and they give me permission. And in some cases, um, I've created a client shared space for them that we work together. And so I have clients that have a few different uh, ways of working. So one way that I've gotten around that is I've created this um, all clients dashboard. So what you can do is if you, whether you're working on a team or everything's kind of happening within your own workspace, I can actually copy databases that exist in any of the other spaces I have permission for into one page on my dashboard. So at the top, I have my tasks. And then I have tasks for every single project, client project that I'm a part of. So this is Barbara's master task database that lives in her space, but I've pasted it here so that anything that is like tagged with my name and is not marked as future and is not done yet, I'm gonna see on this dashboard. Similarly, um, these are all my tasks inside of Egghead. If I click on this, you'll notice I'm in a completely different workspace. But because I have permission to see these tasks inside of that workspace, I can actually uh, pull that data and embed it into my own um, my own space. Um, let's see. Oh, right, client tasks. Um, so yeah, I, this is where I pull in all of my client tasks into one dashboard. This is this is one way of doing that. I also simultaneously have access to this master task database inside of our shared working project space. Um, so I actually do pull these databases into multiple places again to make sure that I, nothing gets dropped. Hopefully that um, hopefully that makes sense. I think that was that Lauren that asked that. Um, or oh, that was, uh, that was, I can't remember who asked that. I, I lost your name there. Um, can I share a client portal with a client who does not? Use? Yes. Okay, great question. Can you share a page with a client who doesn't use Notion? So there are, again, <laughs> with any question with regards to Notion, there's, there's like 10 different ways you could approach things. Um, but that's a great question. So, for example, when I first started working with Barbara, um, you know, Barbara's not very tech savvy at all. Um, using Asana was a struggle. And so what we did was we, we created a shared workspace. Um, and so to start, and this is very simple. Again, like these spaces can be very, very simple. Um, you know, I like to take mine as far as I can and like push the limits of what's possible with Notion, but not every client is gonna understand when they log in, it's, it, it might be really overwhelming. So you'll see, we don't have a lot of places for her to click. And I've got this master task database that we use together. And so in the beginning, the first thing that I did was I, um, I just made that a public access page. And that was something that I was able to share with her and she could see things and um, she doesn't need to log in or do anything. But as we get to the point where she's going to start assigning me tasks and I'm going to start assigning her tasks, and as she got a little bit more comfortable with this new interface, I, I knew I needed to introduce it to her slowly. Um, so again, I started with a public page that she could see um, and only anyone with the link would be able to see. And then over time, as she got more comfortable, I shared this space with her, pulled her in as a guest 
Now she has full access as a guest in my space and she can add tags. She can assign me stuff. She can, um, you know, we can add comments and things like that. So thanks for clarifying, blah, blah, blah. You know, we work together within this space. Now this is actually a page inside of my workspace. Um, but then I have other clients who are comfortable enough and they've set up their own Notion accounts and they've given me access to their spaces too. So um, there's actually a couple different ways that I work with clients depending on how comfortable they are and familiar with Notion. So hopefully that helps clarify the client portal side of things. We'll definitely, we will go in, uh, into more detail in future office hours because uh, client management, there are a lot of nuances to be aware of there. I think, okay, you'll actually see here, um, this is my master task database. Barbara can't see this. Um, even though it's embedded on this page, and even though she has full permission to uh, work with and edit this page, this is Nobody else has access to my master task database except my um, my husband and my virtual assistant. And so this actually just appears blank for her, uh, which is cool. So that's another way when you're working in client spaces, if you want to embed your own master task database in there and be able to see your stuff, um, you can embed that in any shared client space and the client cannot see that. They can only see the tasks that are assigned to them. So that's something to be aware of. Um, April, I saw that um, your invite says accepted and connecting, but it looks like it's not working. Awesome. Hope that was helpful, Lauren. <laughs> MySpace, <laughs> MySpace, yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, it shows accepted and connecting. Okay, let me try, let me try re-adding you again. Ron, great question. Is it possible to restrict the master database but still share tasks from it? Um, so actually, I believe that if I, let's say I open this up, I can make this, uh, I believe I can make this public access and share this link here so i can copy the page link and um, the client could see it so i have done that before for example like i have a project here um, nobody has access to the top level projects database except myself and my virtual assistant but um, productize offers is a course that i collaborate with kai davis and if i open this as a page you'll see i can invite kai just into this entry. So that is something that you can do, like you could collaborate on a task, you could give a give client uh, permission to a specific task. Um, uh, and so yeah, we so Kai and I collaborate on this, we've got tasks in here. Um, but then again, I have my database embedded at the bottom and Kai can't actually see this, uh, this database. So, I mean, I could, I could invite him as a guest on this one. And I think he would, he would probably see that entry. Um, but in terms of filtering a view, you can't just filter a view of your tasks and um, invite your client to only see that embedded filtered view because they can, they will actually be able to access. Um, it's like the sharing permissions is based on the original database um, view. So the filter is not going to prevent clients from being able to see other items in that database. So I'll just, tr I'll try inviting you again, April, just to see if that works. What browser are you using? Oh, interesting. Dan saying that uh, there's a bug right now with Chrome. I am using Chrome currently. Oh, there we go. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't see you, but. Okay, let me figure out how to share the screen. I have not been in here in forever. Um, let's see, maybe this one. If you hover over your video, yeah. there should be a. Yeah, I found it. Okay, oh my gosh. I uh, only, oh wait, here's an application window maybe. There we go. I was like, you do not want to see my desktop. <laughs> right now. Okay, let me find a, uh, a safe page to share. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I think 
if I, you know, I lost you for a little bit, so let me know if we're still talking about it, but the database page that I had showed in class the other day was what I was thinking I could show to kind of explain it to them. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I, think it's, just... I think it's always helpful just to see how other people approach things. Okay, let's see if this will work. Why don't you keep talking and I'll, when you see my screen pop up, you'll know I'm ready to go. Cool, okay, so. Um, yeah, so this is this is one way that I that I collaborate with other people is I will create them. Um, I can either share the project directly with them and work within this space. Um, and then I also like you'll see here in this project, I can add any tasks here. Um, and Kai can't see those because these databases are all private, like that's my weekly agenda and things like that. So uh, these properties just show up as blank for him, but then it still gives us this area in the body that we can collaborate in. And again, I can I can add new um, columns, new pages, whatever. I can drag things around and we can kind of mess around in this space and uh, have some fun. And then I've also got, you know, filtered views here. Now this is a, I think a public uh, database here. Uh, actually, that's an inline, inline database. I'm not yeah. sure if I'm seeing you or me now. It looks like I'm up. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I will unfocus my screen, the close video. Okay, perfect. So this is April's space. So the question was, why would you do a page versus um, a database? And the way I explained it in class the other day, which, by the way, if you guys want to learn more, Marie's got an amazing <laughs> math class. Um, we're all part hey. of kind of a pilot, but it's going to be a lot of <laughs> be phenomenal. So just keep that in mind. And no, she didn't pay me to say that. Um, <laughs> um, one thing that I've done, I've been going through, I've been using Notion for about a year, and I have been going through and cleaning stuff up. Um, and realizing that, like she was showing in the, um, here, let me see, I can go to, wait, this is running really slow. Um, so I, I've mimicked her um, weekly template. And when I want to do the daily journal or I want to reference clients that I'm working with that week, um, I want to get a quick link over to my bills, um, which is a database. So I've um, uh, done a relational to that database within this database each month and things like that. Um, gosh, I hope everything in here is safe for public consumption. Um, <laughs> ways and things like that. So I think what I was trying to explain, I think to Dan is that, yes, if you see these properties up here, you're in a data database, but every entry into a database becomes a page, which then you can customize down here. And so in order to keep track of where everything is, um, oh, this is my command center. So this is like my homepage. Um, oh, here we go. My databases are here. So this is like I started moving pages into databases and wanted to keep track of all the different ones I had. And so this is a page. There's no um, properties up here. And then like my web bookmarks, reading list, um, all of my business stuff, you know, my client database. Um, and then I went back and made a, a master task list. And then we just talked about this in class the other day. I've made an archived task list because when you've done a relational property in um, a database and you want to add a task in that field of the property, you would be scrolling through everything. There's not really a way to filter the view when you're pulling in information from another database. And so the workaround that we've come up with manually, a lot of us is to create this archived task list that really is a duplicate database. So all the fields match. And then as we get um, the task is completed, we just move it over to archive. So when we go searching in that smaller window to put our tasks in to focus on maybe that day or that week for that particular template, um, we're not scrolling through things that are done. Um, the other way I've explained it too is if you think of having binders on a bookshelf. And so like this page is the binder. These would be my table of contents. And then if I click into one of these, I don't know if I have anything in here that I can, that's been ready to go. Um, <laughs> Safe to show. <laughs> yeah, but basically I would you know, click in and then that would be the database 
that's a, it's a page that's only a database that's not a, a page. And I think that's what's being what's confusing to everybody is that um, we're using that word page back and forth. And so if you can imagine like everything is a page, but the structure within that page is either a database or a customizable open space, maybe is a good way to explain that. So this is what I was talking, okay, meant helpful things. My workspace section is getting piled up with all these. Yeah, exactly. So if you have a place where you've organized all your databases, and then actually I have this, now that I'm you know familiar with where I've moved a lot of these things to be relational, I'm referring back to this less and less, but this was actually at the top of my favorites bar for like two weeks as I was moving stuff around so that I could go, oh yeah, that's the database that holds that information now. Um, and then again, utilizing that favorites bar of moving stuff as a favorited, you know, page or database so you can find it quickly again as you're moving stuff around. Um, oh, maybe the Christmas list would be one. Yeah, that's a good one to show. Don't judge, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a page. Um, I have a master gifts database that is, it's, it's a database. It's not a page, it's a database. So then I came into a page and said, I want several different views of this database. And so I've said, I've created a link to the database as an embedded link or embedded database. And then I've done, okay, this is now a master database that holds 2018 and 2019, but only show me my 2019 purchases. And then good thing my husband's not very techy because he would know what he's getting for Christmas. Um, <laughs> and so, um, I then go in and this is where the templates that uh, Marie was talking about are super helpful is I have this new gift entry. Um, and so every time I have a new gift, I go in here and I can put who the recipient is, where I bought it from, if there's a link, if there's an image, all these things. I have a received, wrapped, and given uh, check boxes because some of the gifts are like or Kickstarters. And so I bought like that whiskey travel tumbler thing. I bought that way back in like May. And I am the kind of person that will forget. And of course, it's not arriving until December. So I'm like, nope, I haven't received it yet. And then also, too, I'm really bad. I'm always done Christmas shopping by Halloween. So I hide wow. them. And so I have to have this checkbox of like, did I find it and did I wrap it? And I'm on the merge of adding hidden at and putting a, a thing in here that tells oh, me where I location. Did. Careful, so careful. I <laughs> but you'll see um, this is a page. I can open it as a page and down here I can customize if I want to put more information. So that's what I was trying to explain is each entry, get out of here becomes a page that you yeah. can open, but it's still in this database and it still lives as a relational piece of information. And then I, because I wanted to see it different ways, I now have like the Kanban. So I can say, oh, yep, this is how many gifts I've gotten for each person. I can totally do that up here. But as I was explaining the other day, when I'm out shopping, I don't want to wait for the app to load on my phone. And so this was a quick and dirty way for me to see things in all these different views without having to you know wait for the view to populate um and then i have it by recipient so again i've just embedded the same database done the filtering like she was showing and then i say the recipient is my husband and the year is 2019 because remember this database holds 18 and 19 and will ultimately hold 20 as well um, and so then I can say, oh, yep, here's what I've gotten my husband, what I've gotten my son. Don't worry, y'all, he's over 21. Um, <laughs> but I've gotten, uh, let's see, my son and his girlfriend. You got such a kick out of that. One of those was a Kickstarter thing. Um, and then what I've gotten his girlfriend. And then I can see, I have it so I can see how much I've spent on each person, as well as, and I mean, I'm showing you this as a personal uh, piece, but you can yeah. totally set this up for your business expenses, for your client income, things like that. So then I can see how much I spent on, on Christmas overall this year, and it helps me with budgeting there too. So hopefully that helps you wrap your head around the context of the differences between pages and databases. And I think the best way to understand it is all information that you're putting into Notion 
is digital information. Like if you think of it as like maybe these post-it notes that have are floating around all around, how are you going to structure them? So some of them just need to sit as independent post-it note on a page versus some go together and need to be collected into a database that then can have a different view, maybe in a different context. So maybe I wanna see um, the overall view of this Christmas list in my budget sheet versus um, you know, being able to be out shopping and pull up what I've bought everybody in just an overall Christmas gift list. So hopefully that all makes sense. And I, you know, I'm kind of torn on this analogy too, because I think um, the folders and papers and stuff can be helpful in one way, but then I think that trips people up because they don't realize that a database doesn't doesn't have to live in one place. Um, so the fact that you can like pull and mirror and, yes. um, you know, I, I think that it takes a while to wrap your head around that it. it almost doesn't matter where that database gets created. You can mention it, you can embed it, you can filter it, and it can live in like a hundred different pages if you want it to. Um, and I think that's, it's almost so open-ended. You're like, but how would I, how would I do that? And that um, like you said, that's the strength and, you know, the challenge with getting in with Notion is, you know, undoing that, those boxes that we're used to living in. Like we feel like, oh, totally. this information needs to be duplicated in order to reference it. And what they've solved is you create the information once, and then if it needs to be in another context, you can link it over to these different binders instead of making a photocopy every time. And when you change it in the main source, it will change in those referenced sources because it's just simply, you know, tagged over there. If that, I know it's so hard. Our mind is always, I always say at the end of the day, my mind hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it, ta it takes a while to wrap your it can take a while to wrap your brain around. Uh, and I just wanted to show like a similar example with regards to business expenses, because I think it's it's nice to see a personal and a business one. Um, as a Canadian company, we have uh, US expenses and Canadian expenses. And so we've got like a US credit card, you know, Canadian credit card, monthly recurring, one-time fee. So this allows me to see everything at a glance. Um, there's a lot of expenses there. You can see how much we spend on uh, our expenses. Um, and I can also see like which ones are on Ben's card, which ones are on my card, uh, what is our monthly recurring Canadian, what's our monthly recurring US. Um, and then I can embed this business expenses database in other business expenses pages. Um, I don't, personally, I don't do my my budgeting inside of Notion because I think it's easy, it's kind of easier to do with like banking apps and uh, YNAB and that sort of thing. Um, but, but I still, I track this just sort of as a general, uh, you know, way to keep on top of, of what's happening. Um, so hopefully that, that is helpful. Um, but that's great. Yeah. April, I like, I am not that organized about Christmas and I, I think that's, um, unbelievable. <laughs> it's really cool to see the different ways that people are using Notion. Um, okay. So awesome. Dan said that was helpful. Um, Tyler said, I had a use case for sharing pages with hidden hidden database property. Oh, absolutely. Um, Tyler, why don't you come on up? Um, awesome, April. Thank you so much for <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that. That is awesome. So Tyler, let me know if that invite works. Sharing pages with a with hidden database properties with clients. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, it's like everything's possible. It's just a matter of designing it from the get go in a way that's going to make sense. So Oh, am I already live? Here? Hey, you are live. <laughs> hey, good to see you. How's it going? Doing well. I was wondering um, if I could, I asked on the notion actually, and you responded saying that you actually have a use case where you share client pages, but you hide certain properties in databases. Yep. And so I was wondering um, if I could share the example that I'm working on for a client yeah, actually uh, to create um, proposals through Notion. Oh, yes, yes. And so they had a spreadsheet before <gasps> and I wanted to be able to allow them to quickly have a main database and then create a proposal based on um, the specific client and what oh, are ad opportunities yeah. for them. Yep. Is that something I could pull up here? Yeah. Um, if you hover over your video, there should be a little share screen icon. Um, and also happy to share uh, what my workflow is for creating proposals too, because creating proposals in Notion and being able to share those, you know, create, make it public and share it with a client is just 
so unbelievably helpful. Okay, perfect. So um, can you see the screen right now? Yeah, that's great. Awesome. So here's this the main sales template, and then inside here is the main database. Um, so you can see like quite a bit of information in here. Um, but what I really want to show them, so they're going to have the cost of the ad right here for their for them. Yeah. Um, and then they want to show the client what it'll cost for them with their markup because uh, they're a reseller. And so what I did mm. was I took this main database. And I linked it inside of, so this is one of their clients and I linked it inside of here. This is like actually a copy. Yeah. This is the linked database. Uh -huh. um, but what I'm noticing is when I share this, um, so I want them to be able to share it with a public access code so they don't have to log into Notion. Yep. Um, their end client and then they can only copy on it. Um, but what I'm noticing is when they jump in here, um, and go to that page, they can see the database that I copied in here, but they can't see um, the linked database because that's not publicly shared as well. Yeah. So I was wondering how you got around that um, and then how, so when I have a linked da or copy database here, so I know that they can just copy it and replace it without doing a link, um, but the they will still see this there even if i hide these properties yes um, they can yeah. still click into the page and then see all the properties here so i was wondering is there a way to prevent them from clicking into a page or hiding the properties inside of a page view with a public link okay so you want them to be able to see um is this the page that you're sharing with them or yeah okay so this is this would be the one that the that their end client sees that their end client sees. Okay. Yeah. So this yeah. Would be my client's client. <laughs> so I wonder if this would almost need to be a, this itself would need to be a database and you're relating only the information that you need to see from your original database. Um, like you can share entries from that Canna Cruise database. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, whatever you're sharing with the client can't have that original data in it right um so you might all you might almost have to make a like a like a safe client template version um that would relate to the original one that has all the the correct entries in it so that's what i was seeing you were we were talking about like adding relations to a um a column here like this so like let's say this is the chain that i want to pull in so you add a relation to that database but it would have to then I guess the name would have to be um oh my gosh, there's so is many. Is there a way to ways. pull just specific um categories from here without showing all the all of them? Because that's what I was noticing is if I do relate it, it's just pulling that entire that entire page. Yes, it will pull, yeah. Um Dan said Notion recently responded to someone on Twitter that they would consider adding more fine-tuned permissions. It's not it's not currently possible to give people partial view permissions. Um, but in terms of how you would approach this, because like there's always there's always like workarounds. It's just like what's the easiest way to do this in your workflow? Right. Um, and and actually, I think someone had a very similar scenario in a real estate or. I think it was an interior designer that had like their price and then the price that the client sees. So I know someone has had to deal with this very similar scenario. I would probably have two, like you'd almost be creating like a wholesale and uh, at cost uh, two very, very similar databases. And one would would have like the minimized information in it. Um, right. And that would be the database that, um, so you'd almost look at your, the full priced one, like the one that has all the properties as being your like main original database. And then you'd have like a simplified version. That's a template that you could always like spin up into any of your new um, client accounts. And there'd be a relation there. So you could kind of quickly see them, but you'd, you'd almost have to recreate some of that info in the, the simpler database right. to, re to reduce those. Um, like, could you duplicate one of these entries and then spin that and like move that over into the safe database? Yeah. So what I was what I what I was thinking of as just the solution is just to copy a brand new one, like 
create that template with the entire database in it and then just duplicate that whole database. And then they would have to go in here, like see what their single cost is. Um, and I just put a formula in here, a relation. Um, so they can just switch this formula back to just a number and then uh, they would have to put that, like copy that number back in. But that's what I was trying to figure out is how to keep relations. So this is just 1.5 times their their cost so that they have just a formula that that automatically generates what this new single ad is. Right. Uh, cost is. Um, but if they if they wanted to, they could just delete this column from this database. And then now they would never like the end client wouldn't see it. But now it's yeah. not linked back to the original, which isn't isn't a huge issue right now. But once they start having 10, 20, 30 different clients and they want to update them as their database changes too. So say, hey, here's all the ones you already are signed up for. And here's a few more that have come on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Opportunities. So yeah, I think I, I think, you know, I think that it is just a, a limitation for sharing right now. Um with Notion. So I think, yeah, this mm. might be the only workaround for it. Well, I'm op like, I'm open to it too. I'll just put it out there. If you do want to hop on a call 101 and like workshop this, because I feel like this is a more complex use case, but I, I feel like it, it's a really good challenge. And I know that a lot of people have similar questions around this sort of limitation. So if you do want to hop on a chat, I'd be happy to zoom that and like, see if we can figure out a better way to do it. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm actually absolutely loving using this with clients and then building tools for the clients. Um, and I've used it to build build pages that people can go to and fill out information that are a little more complex than a, yeah. a Google form, which has been super helpful. And yeah, I'm just like super excited to see where this goes because I mean, this can become, I've seen a couple people doing consulting purely on building dashboards for companies and helping yep. them really build their databases in here, so. It's, yeah, what, what's fascinating to me too is like that teams are willing to invest um, it's it's kind of fascinating because it's I've never heard of anyone paying for like an Asana consultant or a Trello yeah. consultant, but there's something about Notion where people they they see the potential, right? Like when they see a use case and they're like, I get, I don't know how to get there, but I can see that this has potential, and and companies are willing to pay to, you know, get their setups done properly and speed up their workflows and, um, you know, create Especially proposal when, templates when they can edit it too. I mean, that's huge. Like if they need to change a database, typically they would have to go to a developer to get those yeah. changes made. But here, they, if, if they spend some time with it, you know, a week or two, um, they can start getting into it, which is super nice. It's like, yeah. uh, I relate it to like how websites are updating. So you have all these these builders now where a developer can come in and, and make the fine tune changes, but then the end client can still change things like text and photos and add blog pages without needing to see everything. Yeah. Uh, this allows the same thing. Where, that's where I'm, you know, really excited for the different sharing permissions. Yeah. Because you can create these custom views and you can already kind of lock them down. Um, you know, that's been a nice thing to, to, to lock things so people can't change things, um, but they can still like change and add add filters if they want. Um, and the yeah. end user doesn't need to see all that back end stuff. Love it. Yeah, no, this is such a, I think this is such a great use case. Um, yeah, I think it's really good for people to see kind of what's possible there. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to um, just see if we could workshop that and actually make it even more functional and and even like some more functional templates for you or something like that. So That'd be amazing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about that, but uh, definitely reach out. Hello at mariepoolin.com. Maybe we can, we can zoom and see if we can figure out a better way to do that. Perfect. Well, I'll jump off here so I can uh, see what other stuff people are working cool. on. Well, so thanks so much for sharing. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, how do I, okay, where am I? I'll, I'll like, boot you out. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> awesome. That was really cool. Um, any other questions that, that popped out of that? That was, that was awesome. Interesting challenge, making a screenshot and paste it. Okay, I'm just gonna check in on the questions here. I'm not sure if we had a chance to address everybody's use cases. We talked about copying databases, exporting databases. Um, that is a limitation when you're trying to export a database. It does include everything, not just the filtered views. <laughs> Torin asked, uh, how many sub-levels databases within databases within databases can you go? Um, 
yeah, April says, as far as your imagination or brain will allow. Yeah, I have definitely done some serious database inception. And so um, I think that's, again, one thing that, that people don't realize you can do is, um, you know, inside a database entry, have another database. Inside that database, you can have another one. If it makes sense, I think uh, it, it can be easy to go a little uh, database crazy. And uh, maybe that's, it's not necessarily super helpful at a certain point, but you do have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you, how you do that setup. Um, Jonathan was saying, hey, Marie, currently building out a client roster and would be happy to share my screen to walk through. Oh, sorry, we missed. Um, I don't know if you're still here, Jonathan, if you want to share how you've been handling your uh, client roster. Let me know if you're still here. I know we're going over time, but I'm I'm totally happy to do that if you if this is um, still helpful and you guys still still need some notion love. In the meantime, is it possible to make a roll up of a roll up? I have data displaying in one place as a roll up that I want to roll up elsewhere, but the roll up I want to reference doesn't display as an option. Um, this might not be the best way to do. Uh, Jake, I don't know if you're still here. If you want to, if whether you want to share or elaborate on what exactly you're trying to do, maybe there's a better way to do it. As far as I know, I don't think you can make a roll-up of a roll-up, but I'm open to being proven wrong on that. Can I show you the issue I'm seeing with my recipe database? Um, uh, Toran, yeah, there's, um, okay, Jake, do you wanna, I'm gonna pull you up on screen, Jake, if you've got, if you wanna elaborate on that. And then Alan, Alan, if you're still here and you're looking at your recipe database and you want to workshop that, we can we can chat about that. Awesome, Tyler. Yeah, thanks so much for for um, being willing to show your space and chat through that. It's, it, I think it's so helpful to see other people's workspaces. Um, and I know we've got a, a big range of experience level, right? I think uh, it takes so long to to wrap your head around. Okay, I'm just seeing if Jake is is able to come up on screen, and then um, Alan, if you're if you're still game, we can pull you up on screen as well. <laughs> let's okay. Let's see if I can reinvite you, Jake. Uh, I shall remove you and and reinvite you. Let's see if that works. Don't reject my invitation. <laughs> I'll pull I'll pull you up as well Alan let me know if that invitation works we've got room to bring a couple people on at the same time in the meantime I'm just going to check the questions hey Jake hello how's it going <laughs> good so you want to share your was it a client use case that you oh it was personal share? actually but okay. it was more just uh an implementation thing that I was trying out. Hey, Alan. <laughs> so I've got the, I started off with a, a meal planner template that was in the public template gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went pretty well for a while. And what I ended up uh, with was a list of ingredients for meals so things i would need to buy and what i'm trying to get out of it is having everything that's in my meals that i've assigned to the week yeah uh, to be in a shopping list so all the ingredients for all the meals that are in the list and so so far the best that i've figured out is what's already there which is just the ingredients for each day. But if I want to go shopping, say, for an entire week at once, um, then it makes it a little more complicated. So I have these test cases set up and have uh, some nested or like multiple references in a row. Are you able to share your screen? Uh, I haven't seen the button for If you oh, hover, yeah, okay. if you hover over your screen, there should be a. Ellen, were you also having questions about the meal planning one or was it yours? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and similar stuff, I think. Um, 
I was getting it was getting a little bit meta for me, so uh, <laughs> I have like ten iterations of it. Like, it was like database, 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 and yeah, it gets. Whatever. Yeah, I feel like it gets a lot messier before it gets. Um, <laughs> okay, oh, that's interesting. The way that. So we've already got the daily list. And then I was thinking if I made a relation to this database where I pulled in each day, then a, a roll up of that would be able to be the uh, grocery list items. And if I told the roll up to only show original, it should just give me a list of everything for the week. And so the first relation is in this database and it has all of the days linked to it so that the roll up of that relation is all of the meals from the week. So mm -hmm. it's a good start. And then next data is supposed to be a relation to the previous database and the roll up is supposed to be of all of the, the roll up of the roll up with <laughs> all the meals. Whoa. But the last step which is the part that doesn't work, is that the roll-up itself is not an option to roll up again. Right, oh my gosh. Um, and so on the other hand, I'm not really sure this is the best way to go about this. <laughs> um, and so I heard that your uh, planning implementation has a shopping list involved. So I was wondering how that works. Okay, that that's super interesting. I, so I would have thought that you you're like, original source database would be your ingredients. Okay, so can you, yeah. you, can you go and to your ingredients and snacks? Let's, let's that is the end goal is to have just a view of my ingredients and snacks. That is basically the shopping list. Right. So could you, could you not fill, like create a filter of this database that is Monday and then filter that to only anything that um, is listed in the, this is like, it's so interesting to wrap your wrap your brain around other people's levels of data and. Yeah, for sure. Um, I might be hiding something. Is there maybe not a connection yet to? I don't think, I feel like there should be because Oh yeah, okay, so this is, so I think the root of the issue is that the ingredients are not one layer separated from yeah. when they're being eaten, but they're two layers separated because yeah. they're connected through a meal first. Yes, and I think and you, so, you probably need to connect both, probably. Yeah, right? like so the day maybe and the meal. Set that up and then just hide the ingredients. Um, but it would be cool if, I, I feel like that might make me choose all of the ingredients uh, like separately after I choose the meals. And so it's it's like, is there a way to, because I know that re uh, relations back reference and appear in the table that the relation goes to as well. And so um, if there was an option to have that apply to a roll up as well, then that would accomplish the same thing. Um, and I know like, I, I'm basically just trying to find the least work intensive way to do this because I know really? I could yeah. try it all up at the end, but. Uh, interesting. Um, I Like I feel like the ingredients and snacks is gonna need to have the meals and the days, but then you could filter it. Um, I feel like if it were filtered by only Monday, you would you would see the ingredients that you needed for Monday, and you could always reference your your meal plan without the roll ups. Like, could you could you go into like Monday's meals? Um, go into your meals database. So, okay, this might be uh, on the right track because now I've got the days showing in the ingredients, which is like almost all the way there. So now if I filter this by uh, that, 
No. <laughs> yeah, I think actually we have anything. power. Oh, uh, close. Yeah, I think you will. Okay, so you Monday, Tuesday. Here's if I just say it contains any page, then. Okay, I think if I set this up to to filter or every day, then that might do it because then I'll have only all ingredients that are. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna step off and I'll let you know how this goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Super complex. Wow. Um. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I need to think about that too, because like I've got my um, meal planning database too, where I did something similar, where it's like I can just view this week's meal plan, and then it has all the recipes that are in there. But I actually haven't connected that to my grocery list. Um, but yeah, that's Ellen. Did you did you want to share what you've been doing with yours, or is this giving any clarity at all? <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. I think I I was trying to do a little bit more, uh, so I can share this. I think. Let's see. Do you see that at all or no? Uh, it's still on J Jake's screen right now. Oh. Can you want to try sharing? Here, I'll close. I'll close his video there. Do you want to try sharing your screen again? Yeah, let's see. Right, Rod was saying oh, on your shopping list, you could maybe filter to include items not in stock or something. Oh, like this that. is cool. OK. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, cool. Perfect. Does that look familiar? There we go. OK. All right. So this is like test 20, really. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I just keep rolling back. Um, so th the ingredients thing is probably the main thing, where uh, you just throw the ingredients on, and it's related to some meal, mm -hmm. which is the other database. Uh, so the meals, you know, have the list of ingredients that we threw in the ingredients table, mm -hmm. and has also all, all this other information. Um, so I can easily say, you know, what I want to cook and kind of check it off, and then that would be added to a shopping list, and that would be fine. Uh, the other thing I was trying to do beyond that is to kind of get the exact information of the ingredients. So like, I need, you know, a pound of carrots. Uh, you know, a can of beans. So then my shopping list is very precise on what right. I need. Uh, so like I had like for each menu item, I mean, we have the ingredients here, which is pulling from that database. Um, but then I was creating another database in here that I was trying to get like, you know, the amounts. Can. <laughs> yeah. And that could get added in, but it was creating, so then it would create like another relation to the ingredients database. So everything was just in different columns right. for each meal. So it seems like I'd have to put that into the ingredients table since, and have that be the one kind of source. Right. So where I can do like in the ingredients, put like, you know, a stalk of broccoli and just put that in the, you know, the key here. Hmm. And then, then that could be for each meal. And so, I mean, that I can do, I would think, if that's like last resort. I was trying to get it down so like each column has, you know, the, the number of something, the measurement of it, and the something. Right. And then that would get spit out to the, the shopping cart. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Let me see. Well, do I have this here? I could see how like doing it on a per recipe basis could get pretty tricky. Um, yeah, and so that's where I was trying and that's where like I can get in situation, let me see if I have it in this one or not. Now, where, I mean, the grocery list kind of has a separate column for each, with each meal. Um, oh yeah, interesting. Uh, let me see if I, uh, where you'd almost have like ingredient oh, like batches or something <laughs> like this kind of where, 
I have, oh, here's chocolate chip cookies, here's oatmeal cookies, and each kind of meal would have its own, own column. So then I need to kind of sum up all the columns, but I don't know exactly all the columns because I keep adding meals, so I have to kind of keep adding a summation of all that. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah, you know, I might need a minute to wrap my brain around this because I, I want to go back now to my my <laughs> database and see how I might solve that. Um, wow, you so guys are so nice. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like, it's like you have to put specific information in each meal, but then that kind of really destroys any kind of database notion. Right. <laughs> um, huh. Yeah, and I guess, I don't know, to me, I guess, um, in what cases, I guess, would you need to get so specific? Like chances are you're going to have to like buy a block of cheese or like a jar of salsa or something like that. So I wonder in, in what cases, I guess, um, yeah, it's, you know, prob it's probably me being anal and you know, <laughs> just be, uh, like, <laughs> um, it was just like one of those things, oh, I yeah, probably yeah. do this a notion and this is, you know, <laughs> kind of, a great way to spend your weekend, right? Um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I guess unless there's like really specific notes that, you know, um, would go along with a certain recipe, I guess there's very few instances where I'd be buying something that was like in such a unique portion that, um, you know, if I'm buying broccoli, I'm buying a head of broccoli. If I'm buying a cheese, I'm buying a block of cheese. So I'm curious if there's a specific instance where you could see it being like wasteful to not be tracking a specific amount that you needed. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'm thinking is, you know, sometimes you're just have a meal for a little family. Yeah. Little yeah. People versus like, you know, I'm having a party and I need 10 cans of something. Right. I, don't, I mean, I don't, you know, it's... It's the big things versus the small things, I guess. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. Um, and I, I mean, one thing you can do is like mention ingredients and recipes too. So like if you knew you were, right? Yeah. So I've actually done that in a text field where I'll just like mention three recipes instead of actually relationally linking to them. Cause that way I could be like 10 X this recipe or something like you could add kind of additional notes for yourself or something like that. Yes. Um, that oh, would be one way to one way to handle it. Um, okay. Rod was saying, I could see why you need to track if you're tracking nutrition info or if you're trying to scale the recipe. That's a great point too, because um, I know some people were like tracking, um, you know, vitamins and, um, you know, portion, like medications and portions and things like that. So I can definitely understand um, yeah. that sort of thing, but yeah. Okay. I'll play around with that a little bit. Yeah, it's like, I. I I'd almost like rely on the directions and stuff, uh, you know, to kind of clarify, like, how much of this should I use? But yeah, yeah, it was just to get it into that in the shopping list if I wanted to be real precise. But yeah, normally, I don't think I need to be very precise. On yeah, I just wonder, like, you know, does the benefit really outweigh like, is getting that precise adding that much, you know, shaved time or whatever versus the time that you'd spend trying to like build this crazy master database yes um, and that's to, you know to be determined maybe maybe it does uh maybe there is a better way to do it but um jake was saying everything worked out turns out i didn't need to filter per day i could just filter by day not empty since that means i assigned it to a day yeah it's so fascinating um rod was saying you'd need to have another database of ingredients that would have multiple entries for the same item. Yeah, exactly. Um, it could get pretty hairy if you had like full thing of celery, celery stock, celery one ounce, like that would be. <laughs> that yeah, would be... No, I, I think I had that at some point. Oh, I know why I didn't. Uh, I, I was doing that and then I was getting really, really anal because then I was like, I want to group each kind of vegetable or something together. Right. I can see them like, you know, if, 
I you could create that. some collections, right? It's like yeah, the... so I feel like you know regular expression. Yeah, <laughs> the hell out of it, and I'm like, okay, I don't know. The Mediterranean collection, right? It's like about <laughs> your the Me Mexican night co collection. That's so funny. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. I'm sorry if that doesn't doesn't help, but I I um I think you're on the right track. You're obviously like figuring out a system that's that's working, and I guess the question is, are you know do you let go of the control over, <laughs> over the granularity of the ingredients? Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Hope that was uh, hope that was helpful for folks to see. Okay, thanks. Databases of ingredients could have formulas that add up to portion sizes. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point too. Um, cool. Are there any other? questions or clarifications. I know it's a lot if you're just getting started with Notion. I know that um, it can probably be pretty overwhelming to see databases that are already connected and pretty advanced. Um, so it does take some time to wrap your head around. I mean, you know, full disclosure, I didn't really use hardly any databases for the first <laughs> I don't know, four months of using Notion. Everything was pages and I had all sorts of, you know, designs and columns and stuff. And then at some point I was like, wait a second, I think there's there's a better way to do this. So you kind of layer in that stuff over time. Jean-Pierre, thanks for coming. Jake, <laughs> amazing, yeah. Yeah, some people are just getting started. Yeah, it is it is overwhelming. It's, um, it's a very different kind of tool, right? There's no, um, there aren't really the same guardrails that there are with other productivity apps and task trackers and things like that. So it can be a lot to give yourself that structure. Um, and so I think it's really helpful to try loading in templates, you know, see the different ways that other people are using it and then come up with your own projects. Start small, you know, is there like creating a client portal, like kind of section it off and, and take on one project at a time. The public template gallery is amazing. Um, you know, if, if you saw anything here that you want more detail on, we can definitely send a follow-up um, follow-up email with some links to templates because there there really are some amazing templates uh, built into Notion and just in the public template gallery. So don't hesitate to load some of those into your account and uh, play around with that data. Remember too that you can move stuff in, you can move stuff out, you can delete fields. It's uh, nothing. You're not really stuck with anything that you create. Jeff said, it takes time to sort out what you need and also how Notion can help you do that. Um, but what you tend to find is that you create and then you refine and then uh, exactly, and then you find more things that Notion can do. That's exactly true. So again, what my setup looks like today is completely different than what it looked like three months ago, six months ago. I'm always, um, always kind of pushing it. Like the, the course that I'm running about Notion is on Notion. Um, Notion is not a course delivery platform, but I'm I'm like, well, why not? If I can share access to this page, then what would it look like to actually deliver a course on Notion? Each of those lessons being a database entry. So every every month, I feel like I'm sort of pushing the boundaries of like, how how would I do this in Notion? What could that look like? What's possible? Um, but yeah, it takes it takes some time as you're playing with your data to to figure out how to do that. So hopefully hopefully these sessions are useful for you. Um, next week we have Ali Abdal, who's he's a doctor uh, who also, he's got an amazing YouTube channel. I've binge watched so many of his videos. Um, and he's gonna talk about how he uses Notion to do uh, what he calls a resonance calendar and also how he studies and gets things done. His setup is really, really awesome. So definitely check that out next week. We're hoping in the future to alternate these sessions too. Um, bring in an expert for a session and then uh, do more of these sort of build with me sessions too, where we can answer Q&A, bring people up on screen, um, just so we can kind of alternate the more advanced use cases with maybe some more of the beginner explainer sessions too. So hopefully that's helpful. And we do really look to you for feedback on that. So if there's something that you want to see in more detail or something that would be more helpful, definitely let the team know. And um, we're always happy to we want to make these useful for you and for you to see what's possible. So uh, definitely join us next week if you can. Same time. Um, every Friday morning we do these 10 o'clock and we bring in all sorts of interesting people who are using Notion in interesting ways. So I just love seeing how people are um, using Notion to supercharge all sorts of areas of their life. Awesome. Um, 
yeah, if you want to do more of these build with me sessions and bring people online, we will definitely, um, I think we're, we're hoping to alternate maybe every other week. So we'll expert one week and then we'll do a build with me session another week. And uh, also try to alternate some of the business and personal cases too, because I know we've got a big mix of people here. So you guys are troopers. We did an hour and a half today. That's awesome. I could probably um, be careful if you ask me about Notion. I could I could talk about it all day. Um, thank you so much for joining me this Friday morning, and we will see you next week. And uh, thanks so much for everyone who is willing to show their screen and and come up and share their workspace with us. Thank you for joining. We will see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend.